financing and sustainability strategy. I want to make um, a, a, an observation. I, my presentation, my discussion is likely to be that I am a poor uh, bonus of SID. Knowing that many of you are still going to consult for them uh, is also very relevant at this uh, occasion. There is this evil adage uh, made popular by Chino Achebe in his, uh, in his novel, uh, Things Fall Apart. And I paraphrase that at the uh, proverb that looking at the mouth of a king, no one will think that he has sucked his mother's breath. Rest. And this is applicable to large and famous institutions or uh, companies we have today. Uh, some of us will look at it and never believe that once upon a time they were indeed startups. Uh, the GE, the Apple, and coming home, the Download uh, GT Bank, Zenith Bank, and of course, my finance um, Successful businesses obviously bring a lot of joy, fulfillment. You are happy that you have done it. And then the financial return is also very, very attractive. But just at the same time, fail at all other performing businesses also bring some reproach. Uh, nobody wants to we will not be very happy if a business uh, is underperforming. And for me, this makes attention that we are giving to sustainability uh, though of startup imperative. Uh, the, what is also true is the fact that statistics on um, the mortality rates of startup are quite depressing. Uh, talked about over 30 percent the first two years, 50 percent in the five, first five years, and a little higher in uh, the first 10 years. I hope these are actually more or less statistics dealing with uh, other clients, and I believe that given our harsh operating environment, our statistics will obviously be more depressing. The usual thing we point out when uh, you look at the failures of a startup is overboring uh, institutions that actually crumble under uh, over indebtedness, lack of skills, especially in business management, financial management, even people's management, as well as the one we always talk about, the corporate governance, uh, the structures and their practices. But if we have a startup, it means that something has started. And therefore, we congratulate those who have started because they have overcome three major barriers or uh, challenges. The first one is making first decision to begin a business. For most people I have come across, they have always, always at the edge of saying, I want to start a business, I want to start a business, and never started anything. Uh, it's also that you have overcome the challenge of searching of a business idea. That also can also be very problematic. And finally, you have taken the definite step to begin one. So I will say congratulations. But the next challenge is you need to uh, a small business owner investment innovation and indeed to also pay you uh, as the owner. So when that is proven for feasibility and sustainability is proven, then we move to um, what I will consider now the sources of fund and institutional viability or sustainability. I am always not in agreement with people who say that I didn't start a business because I did not have money. I always disbelieve them. And I know my reasons. 
And at the same time, I always sympathize with people who already have started business and said so the challenge is money. So there's one thing that you have not started between money is the barrier, and then you have started. And the truth is that money is very important. As blood is vital to our you know, survival and uh, well-being as, as, as uh, mama, as human being, so I think money is a one vital to uh, businesses, especially startup. Uh, when you see a business that is not doing well, it's likely going to be anemic. And that anemia comes from lack of enough uh, funding. And therefore, money is extremely very important. Uh, you need money to, if you are uh, manufacturing uh, concern, you need money for raw material. Then there are also generic expenses to all enterprises. You need to pay fees, you need to pay salaries, and of course, you need to pay yourself as well. So money is extremely important. But the bad news is that the conventional sources of funds for businesses, especially micro and small businesses, are not forthcoming. Uh, over the past 25 years, governments at federal and state level have actually come up with several you know, um, special schemes to provide financial services to small and medium enterprises. Uh, we have the small uh, business, um, small scale business credit scheme, we have the, uh, there was a time we have the People's Bank, we have the Community Banking, and obviously we have all the programs. But the reality is that the proportion of loans given out, especially by commercial banks, that will go to small businesses has always been in decline. About 44.8% 44, 44, 48, 48 in 1992 to 1%, 1.1% 1 in 90, I mean 2009. I think recent statistics are not even more um, encouraging, uh, just as we had uh, some time ago. So therefore, we, look, we need to look at some sources uh, for small startups you know, to raise their money. The first one I always uh, mention is your own money, your money you. Uh, this basically will come from the personal saving and liquidation of assets of the promoters. And the good side of it, the plus side is that they are usually cheap. The, 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 which obviously will not carry the burden or obligation of payment of interest or fees. Uh, there's no also the very intense pressure that you know lenders always put on borrowers, and obviously uh, having uh, a sort of uh, very uh, irrepayment, uh, uh, irrepayment schedule that is not uh, favorable. But the downside of it is that it's usually small, especially young people who are starting business. Obviously, do not have enough savings. And again, you cannot deploy savings beyond the initial deployment. You take your savings already deployed. So if you need additional funding, it cannot come for your savings any longer. Um, the other one is that you have uh, the family members and friends, and some people are fools. I don't know who are the fools. But what I know is that friends and family members may be willing uh, to provide funds in the form of cash, uh, I mean, gifts or uh, soft uh, loans. Uh, they usually also not, uh, they are cheap, they are not also much, but I think what I always encourage people is to ensure that there's proper documentation of the terms of form from friends and families in order to maintain your relationship. Uh, so that's the step. Then we move to the the angel investors and the uh, venture capitalists. Uh, this again, I would want to say that the angel investors are usually persons acting from the heart. Uh, they want to provide the funding and assistance to, to start up. Uh, usually they are persons with some you know, resources. They also have some experience, they have some social network that they can deploy 
to assist the state of to become quite successful. On the other hand, the venture capital tend to operate from the head. Uh, they are more formalized, and then the process of support obviously are quite uh, formalized. The C for the C for uh, businesses, startup businesses that underlie this, that have potential for growth. They want to support and at the end make a lot of money from that intervention. Whereas the uh, angel investors, like I said before, are not mainly motivated by financial consideration. So that's why I say they, are, they act from uh, the heart. They tend not to get involved in their business, but for venture capital firms, they tend to be more involved. At times they can seek a seat on the board of the startup. Um, then we look at leasing. I think this is one area that small businesses have not paid attention to. The large businesses have benefited so much in terms of equipment leasing, but for micro businesses, they have not. Uh, uh, but the reason, obviously, would be that uh, there are not so many micro lending uh, leasing companies around. In the Wooten the Labo system, we have a, a, a leasing company that is really doing very well uh, because the opportunity there in this school is enormous. So I believe that uh, startups can take this opportunity because the beauty of it, the, the, the point is this, that the business make profit not because of the ownership of the equipment they use. Profit is, is, does not come and come the ownership of the equipment they use. It actually comes from the, from the usage of that equipment. Therefore, why do you want to own uh, those equipment when you can actually um, get and use? And that obviously will free your initial capital that you would have invested in acquisition of, of uh, this item. So, and then uh, we have now development intervention funds uh, available. Uh, these are usually uh, capitalized and implemented by government agencies. For instance, you have the Central Bank of Nigeria uh, implementing the micro, small, and medium enterprise development fund. The Bank of Industries have their own. The new uh, key uh, and the, uh, the, uh, here around uh, now is the Development Bank of Nigeria, the DBA. They also provide this. The, they usually come with subsidized pricing. Like the central bank form will say that uh, the financial institution that will take that sell form should not lend above 9% everything. Okay? So it's subsidized. Uh, but the truth is that why have many small businesses not access it? Likely because of the bureaucracy and other considerations. So it is it possible to still try to explore those opportunities. Trade credit. Um, I think in my document would finance not trade finance, trade credit. Uh, this is quite an agreement, I mean the basic agreement for um, the supply that you may not have to, you will not have to pay at the point of accessing the services of goods, but over time. Uh, when I was fighting with the early 70s, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he was an elderly friend, obviously. Uh, we'll go to a church, get some drugs, these drugs, paracetamol, and then he'll come around to be sell, and then go back. So he never invested anything. He was simply just, you know, getting from the source, sell, maybe so many, and around return. I think that this is quite appropriate for startup who obviously will not have enough resources. Yes the suspects, the banks, and the financial institution. Um, the banks, the commercial, the merchant, and of course, the microfinance bank that I and Kumi have been uh, uh, working with. Um, but when it comes to banking finance, I think it's a situation of like this, water, water, water everywhere, yet not a drop to drink. I, I think the part is that there's so much resources in the banking sector. Um, and they can tell you, the telecoms can tell you, the oil and gas, at least in the recent bank can tell you that they have that. But the reality is that it doesn't go down to uh, start up. And on that, why? The first thing is that they feel that 
And it is not a field. The reality is that Star Wars does not have historical records. The banks are very particular about looking at your trend of performance. Obviously, uh, we don't have that. They also want to look at collateral, uh, which uh, small businesses, especially new business, will not have. They look at um, the side. This is this is funny, but it's important to the banks that the little money a startup will de demand does not attract them. Why would a commercial bank, you know, spend all this time to process for two million or five million dollars when it can do big ticket uh, facility? So that would be a barrier. Inadequate system and of course inadequate governance and uh, processes. So these are some of the challenges I think uh, the startup can uh, uh, con um, con contend with when they want to assess fund. But because we also quickly want to go through sustainability strategies, um, because I believe that every business model desire to see sort of business movie and uh, you know. And, and meeting all the expectations, including expectation of return on investment or of capital. Uh, the privacy of finance to institutional viability cannot be emphasized. We have really emphasized that before, that money is so important. As one business person will say, money, money is very important. Now, but we do also know that Availability of funds is not enough guarantee for institutional sustainability. Indeed, uh, many startups have collapsed, not for lack of funds, but for inappropriate financial structures, the structuring of finances and terms, as well as poor financial management, especially cash flow uh, management. Now, let's therefore see how we can address that. The first thing I would recommend to start up is to come up with a very realistic business strategy and plan and projections. New business, new idea I can be very intoxicating. I know that. When I was starting up Lapo, I was so carried away that I want to give money to the poor people. I want to do that. I was not even giving um, attention to planning and you know and all that or what I just want to do. Most people they come around they want to start businesses like they are possessed with that idea of that business. And in the process, they forget the key thing that is having a very realistic uh, financial planning. So many that many um, startups therefore collapse because eventually without plan, they suddenly come across something they have not prepared for. For instance, it could be unexpected expenditure that will collapse or Disappointment of what you expected as revenue that never uh, uh, came. So realistic plan is only not just useful for your business as a guide, but it's also the language investors understand. When you're talking to investors, you the first thing they ask you, where, what is your plan? And if you cannot offer that, uh, that is difficult. Um, Good business plan the strategy should be comprehensive. It should uh, look at the operating environment uh, with adequate attention to economic, political, social, cultural, and policy and regulatory domains. Um, you need to take into account what is the political implication for the success of your business in early 2000, I mean 2019, because of the election. What are the policy implications? How would that impact on the small business you are beginning? Market and competition is important. Looking at how is the market, um, where, who are the key players in that market? Uh, how do you look at the market? Um, what how do you position yourself uh, is important. The fact that your husband has a store, he is street, has a house already, you are not going to be rich, that you can take as a store, but the street is number 245, but in the Yamasa Street, off Nakoja Street, off Akoja Street, off Ita Street, obviously we will not help you. So it may be better to just get a better location and then pay more and then make more money. Okay, um, implementation of plans and clear milestones. Clear milestones. Five year plan, fantastic. Where are you going to be the first year? Two years. The first, second, two, yeah, three. Where are you going to be? 
their business uh, folding strategy and their projections. The other thing I also talk to people about is to look at your funding options, the choice of funding options. Um, you need to make sure that I see that startup, I tell them clearly, don't borrow. I'm a lender. I will need people to borrow so I make more money. But for startup, I think I will not advise. You just give me quite a look at your own money from families and friends and the pool, mm -hmm. you don't know, and then mm -hmm. also the angel investors mm -hmm. and few others. So if you are quite attractive, you have potential for growth, then venture capitalists can uh, come in. Uh, growth. And so the other thing is that you consider the quantum of funds that you want. I've seen people that the borrow institution borrow. When you have a small loan, a small fund, that's little, too little fund, and too much fund, they have the same negative impact on the business. Uh, when I started last week, I would talk to a woman, I asked, how much do you need? He said, I need 1,000. Now, when we sit down and analyze what the way we are analyzing for, take 10 uh, actors you have your provision store. If you are going to go to Onicha, remember I started in Washington, so Onicha is quite close to Washington. And um, what will you buy? By the time we analyze it, she just needed 400 naira. And if we have made a mistake of giving her 1,000, it is thereafter she will remember that the family has a plot. So that's using the 600 or more blocks. And blocks never repay loans. So, so you need to look at that very uh, well. You consider the terms and conditions. Uh, terms, what is the beauty, the, the thing is also about startup is that because you are under pressure for, for funds, you never pay attention to the terms the banks are talking about. It is when the trouble crystallizes that you begin to look at the terms. So, but take time to really look at the terms, especially the flexibility of repayment structure. It's, uh, it's, scary, it's very important. If I borrow for your farming activities, and you are asking me to start repaying every month, equal amount every month, obviously that will be useless for me. So repayment structure is extremely uh, important. Financial management strategies is important. Efficient financial management. Um, what is well known is that small business can start off actually pay because of poor financial management. And um, I think the one thing about it is that Startup tend to not to have enough reserve. Uh, startup businesses should not start up, should not set up foundations or charity. That is not their business now when you have no money. So I believe that um, I would say that the startup should operate only projects. And the expression as teaching as a new business owner is appropriate. A new business owner must be very stingy. If they have not told you that you are stingy, there is there's a problem. Uh, so, um, that as if you want. The other thing is that item of expenditure for efficient financial management can't be done without cost. For instance, use your car. I used my, my city room for full one year uh, doing that work. And when we want to do training, so they tell me when I go back to Bini, my car, the, the, the right is the one you roll up like this, you know, before you drive it. We roll over what to do training, we start doing training in that, uh, in that garage. So we did that for before even go to go and rent. So, um, the, the explore opportunity for share facilities and services, and then defer immediate gratification. So you can put on hold celebration of birthdays and, uh, and then Later, you can do it in the laboratory. So, conclusion. Um, he or she, maybe this talks like about the company, uh, who desire to start a business, desire to do their thing, especially in our environment today. Uh, one is the fact that if you set up a business, the first thing you have done, you have created self employment, which is the best form of employment. Is it not correct? Yes. The second one is that you have created employment for other people. Whether we like it to be the biggest problem we have in Nigeria, it's not necessarily power, it's not necessarily it's that of youth on employment. We pray that it does not blow on our face one day. 
Um, Nigeria is again very interesting environment. Very interesting. On the one hand, Nigeria is possibly the only country with close you will not close your eyes and you still see business opportunities. That is to say, you have business opportunities almost everywhere. But at the same time, because of our harsh operating environment, it is a killing feed for startups. Okay? Here is a nation that all opportunities are there, then at the same time, startups, you know, have to really uh, be very strong. But in order to keep your business afloat, you must require diligent attention to key sustainability uh, strategy. That for me is my, you know, so more or less like uh, my conclusion that a startup can be successful. All the big ones were one startup, they are big. So if you want to keep that flow for over a long time, then you need to consider that. And by way of concluding, I want to quote Jeff. Jeff is the founder of Amazon. He said, I knew that if I fail, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing, that is, I may regret is not trying at all. Let us try and do not quit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our guest speaker is a man of his world. When I called him up last week concerning today's program, he said, I'll be there. And we are very proud of you. Thank you very much, Professor. We are on the list. If you look at the programs, we are moving on time. We are going to invite our panelists who are going to do justice to this program. And at this point in time, I want to hand over to the chairman. President and General Council to go to moderate this area. Thank you, I am. I hope you have the uh, speakers and the microphones. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, speaker. Uh, we have 25 minutes allotted for this uh, session. Uh, we are going to do just that. Uh, maybe. Uh, Allow the 25 minutes on this side, and then maybe another five minutes um, for any question and answer to our great panelists. I'm excited. Um, the various papers that have been presented this morning, um, uh, kicking off from our chairman, uh, um, who has you know, given us uh, a dose to start with, and then the speaker, of course. You all agree that the speaker has been amazing, he gave us everything that we know. Yes, we're all bankers as associates, you've done your practice of lending, your practice of banking and all that. It's a refresher, but there are some deep insights inside this. Why we're doing this is that you will act as financial advisory. You know, you can't give what you don't have. And so we are equipping you, uh, you know, letting you know, refreshing you, and give you further insights so that when you go out there, you know, um, you will represent us as good ambassadors. Uh, on this note, can we give another round of applause to uh, <laughs> And to our panelists, of course, you agree with me, we have real heavyweights. These are people that have practical and relevant experience. Uh, there's a lot of theory and practice uh, with them. And therefore, um, we will kick off. I uh, just want to uh, welcome to me and uh, Mr. Ayo um, to this uh, session. We've we'll heard from our, our, our speakers. And, uh, in fact, our chairman started by saying that small and medium enterprises remain foundation, as well as the building blocks in the realization of meaningful and sustainable growth in the economy. And there is no, I can't agree any less, and I, I think it's something that we all of us agree there. And then, uh, when the chairman was talking, he talked about, he didn't say, uh, not in first, 
just to say, you know, people say idea rules the world. So should idea or money first? He is of the view that ideas and then once you have very good ideas and you articulate properly, you may get the financing. But also we have an issue. Why the large scale failure of this particular sector? We know that it goes, it delivers for our breakthrough, for our development, but there are, it's all over the world, all over the planet that uh, the service is not very good. And that's maybe why we're talking about sustainable strategies. What we do to make sure that at least we change that um, 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 curriculum. And so, and also, what would be the value our members, especially as they are in financial advisory services, because they will be interacting with SMEs. What would they do? What of value do they add? You know. So I leave uh, to our panelists, uh, starting with Mrs. Bobi Lawson. You know, she came here uh, a little bit. I know you tried me. He said uh, last a bit, a bit the first and all that. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Uh, Bobi, can we have your intervention in this regard? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Good, good morning, everyone. I truly apologize for coming in. Um, but I'm always, you know, happy to be here. And um, you know, once um, the chief speaker had presented his paper, you wonder 